Hey Stampers, it's Georgia Jaguar again. I'm really excited to show you something that I've created and that's a soda pop top necklace. I uh, put my, my own initial in it, monogram it, but they're a fun gift. And what I love about using Stampin' Up! Soda Pop Tops, they do flatten really nicely so you don't have to have the sharp edge around the top. And also, it doesn't have to say Bubble Up or Orange Crush on the back. And you can add your own chain, you can customize them with someone's monogram, or use something that's specific to the person you actually want to make it for. So stay with me, you're going to enjoy this. So here you can get a little bit closer look at the necklace that I made. I've got my own initial in there, of course, and I used the um, Stampin' Up! First Edition specialty paper behind it, which I love because I'm a vintage girl. I like things old, and I did add a rhinestone. And so I'm just going to show you quick how you can make your own. First of all, you need the soda pop tops, and they come with this little bit sharper edge up here, but I'm going to use my Big Shot to flatten it out and give that nice edge on it. When you're using your Big Shot, you're actually going to open the platforms so that there are no tabs. And put it between the two cutting pads, so one on the bottom. And I like to put mine face down. I don't know if that's the scientific way to do it, but that's what seems to work really well. Face the sharp side down, and then add another cutting pad over the top. And put it through your Big Shot. And it really doesn't take much effort to do that. In fact, I did these a few weeks ago with 14 Girl Scouts. And they did a great job doing these on their own. So now you can see that it flattened out the sharp edge. So you can see going from the sharp one to the flat one. So I'm going to set... What I want to do next is to take my little 1 16th hole punch. And I'm actually going to find a spot in the rim and punch a hole. And you'll want to do this before you finish your to your um, necklace because you don't. After you put crystal effects in it, that's what gives it that shiny effect. I'm going to take my piercing tool and just make sure and open that hole up. It's a soft enough metal that it allows you to do that. I'm also going to take a jump ring, and I looked for larger jump rings so that it gives me more flexibility and options as to what kind of chain or necklace I want to put it on. And so it's best to have some kind of pliers or a jewelry tool if you have it. So that gives me a pretty good sized opening to run a, a chain through that. My next step, and I, I like to use the stays on ink because when you're adding the crystal effects over the top, you get the best effect with the stays on. And using our lovely letters alphabet, of course, you're seeing it backwards, but I'm making one for a friend. Her first initial is B. And so I'm going to stamp that on my paper. And get a nice crisp image. I'm going to use my one inch hole punch. And I love punching after stamping because then you can see the image, exactly what you're punching out. So I've got my B. And I just like to use a little bit, and this is the adhesive I'm going to use. It's called Crystal Effects, and I love that Stampin' Up! has improved the nozzle on it. I'm just going to put a little bit of that as an adhesive right in the center. Then I'm going to take and add my letter, and of course it gives me a little bit of time to move it around so I've got it straight. Then I'm going to take more Crystal Effects. Actually, before I do that, because I want to add a little bling, I'm going to take my rhinestone, and of course your piercing tool is your best tool for getting those rhinestones off too. And I'm just going to add one up where this little fleur de -lis accent is on my B. Press that in. And then I want to make sure that that is underneath my crystal effects when I put it in. And there really is no special way to do this. I kind of work my way around the inside right up to the ridge or rim and you just want to make sure and not leave any bubbles so you don't want to shake your crystal effects just make sure it gets right up and then of course I'm going to need to set that aside to dry but then you could see on the necklace that I had showed you before as it gets dry that the cloudiness will disappear Let's see.
right there. And so it dries nice and clear like the one that I had showed you before. Um, I also took the small ones because you get eight large and you get eight small. And I did the same thing. I was able to um, flatten it by sending it through the Big Shot, use some smaller alphabet that I had, and I actually put a lobster claw on this one so that I could actually add it to my larger one if I want to, or to a charm bracelet, or onto a purse, or a zipper pull. You can use it for lots of different ways. So isn't that fun? And have fun making these for gifts for people that you care about. Thanks for coming by.